thanks for being here with me today. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I am going to make this for our Makers Monday. Everything I had already cut out, I just pulled this out of my work in progress bin. You'll see me talk about it a little bit in my Saturday situation from last Saturday. These are two inch strips by width of fabric. This is a block I was playing with using scraps, probably from the, the trim on the edge of this because these are from a panel. So I don't know if this will get used or not, but there's only one. But then we have these little guys are owls. So I am going to put these together today. Super easy panel quilt. I don't know what order I'm going to lay them out in. Just kind of throwing them out there. I do want to mix them up a little more if this should be the way it comes out. Maybe this would go here. I don't see any duplicates yet. Now I haven't seen this in a while, so I don't remember exactly what I had to work with. Very cute. And we have one left over, plus this funky thing that I don't see doing anything with. Don't get two of the same next to each other. I think I want this. Kind of play a little Sudoku while you're at it. Try to <laughs> mix it up pretty good. I think I did well. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with that. And this is extra. Now this can be used in something else, a little pillow or something. And then I still have this random thing. <laughs> I'm just playing with it, obviously. And I am gonna put sashing on here. That is gonna be really, really cute. And we're just gonna keep it small. So I'm going to make sure they're square and it's just a matter of putting them together and this is how easy and fun it is to work with a panel. <laughs> I didn't have to create my blocks. Okay, there's my three rows. And these look like they are seven and a half by seven and a half, and I have a seven and a half ruler. This is from Creative Notions Quilt Shop. She does a monthly subscription box, and she always includes a notion that is labeled. So here's her little logo with the trailer on there. This is the seven and a half square up ruler, which is the size that these we're looking at. Hopefully, I don't have to take too much off of them. So what I'm trying to do is just center these squares the best I can so that I have equal amounts of stuff on the outside. Now this looks like it could go even a quarter inch bigger or half an inch, but I know whichever one I just lined up on here was seven and a half, so that would be the smallest or the largest. Now I need my sashing strips. Two, four, six. I only need six. The same width as, as the blocks. So 
So the way I'm doing this is I'm making sure it's the right width, but I'm lining up the edge of my fabric on one of these solid lines to make sure I have a 90 degree angle and that it is straight. So I'm not using this board at all, in case you're wondering how, how this is happening. There you go. Okay, so I still have this little piece and these, but I'm not done with them. Okay, each one of these is going to get one of these in between it. I barely have enough to go around the whole thing. Let's see. I'm going to join these end to end. That way I can get every bit of this. I'm not joining this. I'm going to to end to end. <clears throat> Don't think I have enough strips to give me fold pieces without piecing. And while I'm over there, I can start putting these together. I think I can get rid of these now. All right, look how cute this is. So I've got my strips and so you put the side pieces on and then these and when you come to your joints do your best to line them up and then put your top and your bottom piece on that way all of these are going the same direction and then this is all that i have left of this fabric and i don't know if i have enough to do two strips um, i'm going to fold this in half because i know i'm going to need two of whatever i come up with and this looks long enough wow yeah. It's long enough to do two pieces with a little bit extra. Look at that. Actually, a lot more than I anticipated. So, let's put those two guys on there. You notice I pressed everything towards the um, the dark side, which is also my sashing. It's cute. I love bright colors that's all that's left <laughs> if I had not joined the ends I would have ended up with a whole bunch of short pieces trying to piece it together so I would have had one side that would have just been quite ugly any bigger it's going to be like the focal point of the quilt and I don't want that so I am going to sew these end to end but I'm going to make sure that my pattern is repeating so after this block comes the blue and then the yellow so blue is already starting to come out when this opens up, it looks like that. That's pretty good. It is 26 and a half square. So, I'm going to take two pieces and cut them at 26 and a half. So, here's my little wall hanging slash baby quilt. And normally, you put the sides on first and the top and bottom, although somebody made up that rule and don't think it's a hard fast rule anyway but if I put the sides on first then these are gonna match up exact and I want it to be kind of a brick you know like a building block so I'm actually gonna do the top and the bottom first and then measure it and do the sides and that way I don't have these lining up
So, oh, look at this. This is what we, we did pretty good. All right, so here's our two pieces. Here's our quilt front. Now we want to clip our last border on right here. So when you have a pattern like this, you wanna make sure that you don't switch it up. So here it goes pink, blue, green, pink, blue, green. There's a lot of other colors in there too. But I wanna lay this out there in the same way, and I did the same down here. Pink, blue, green. Okay, so we're going the right way. Pink, blue, green, just to make sure. So this ends up being 33 square. Now we are getting big enough that we do want to measure instead of just sew it on. This is where you would get like wavy stuff if you didn't. But that seems interesting. 33. Now I measured in the middle of the quilt, which is why I did that because 33. Um, things can start bowing and you want it to stay consistent with the middle. So I am going to ease this in. So you want to find the middle of both. And I'm kind of guessing, but I should be fine. It is 33 by 33 and it needs its back. I am going to quilt this on my domestic machine. The nice thing about how this turned out is I do not have to piece the back. Now this is kind of a unique piece of fabric. Oh my goodness and that's the exact size I need. Maybe I will put this on the back. And then this is the border because like how else am I going to use this fabric and it's the right size and it's just cute. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, it is the exact width. And since I'm quilting it on my domestic machine, not recommended to be that close but it's doable very doable so the back and the border are gonna match this will be my binding and by doing this I can also quilt it in white um, <laughs> I'm liking this a lot I have a big piece of batting or a couple pieces that are just sitting here that are left over from when I was cutting other projects. I do believe this top piece is going to work. Yeah, this is bigger. I'll save it for something else that's bigger. So, <laughs> did it again. It's the width that I need. I think I'm going to go ahead and spray base this and keep going. A lot of times I get to the stage and I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> we'll come back and finish it. But I think I'm going to finish it now. This. Love it. Especially for this.
I have bobbin, I have white thread, I spray basted this, I've done a couple general pins, and now I'm ready to start. Now remember, with all of my sashing, I folded, I ironed or pressed everything into it. So I like to reinforce, and you can feel that this is where the seam allowance is. So I'm inclined to maybe do a straight stitch coming down on the outside of these boxes to help hold it together and frame it. I could just ignore that and, you know, do a, I'm not going to do a meander on this one. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I am going to do square boxes and just follow this. Which makes me think I need to change my top thread to maybe this color. Then it won't be as noticeable. I'll still leave the white on the back. Let's see what I might have. It's actually better to start in the middle and work your way out. That way if you have some um, excess, you can push it out. But I also want to flow so I don't have as much to pick up. And I'm thinking I want to start like over here. <laughs> Needle down is always a good thing for these projects. That way it doesn't accidentally move on you. I probably should lengthen my stitch just a tad. Walking foot is down there. I'll go to 3.5. That looks good. Sorry, you can't see this. <laughs> can see this and that looks good let's keep going I am gonna follow this all the way down So right now I have a four inch border 
that goes around. If I take this ruler right here and put it, well, four inch, that's before I did my, um, I sewed, had sewn it in. So if I make this three and a half inches or even just three, see how nice that is to just be able to line that up and that up. You have three inches here, three inches here. I can see that I have, oh, I think that's where it's going to get cut because see how close that is to the edge there. Trying to go a half an inch is not going to make a big difference. So three inches it is. And now I'm just going to line it up this way, following this and trim it there. Oh, I am, let's see, I'm going to go this way first. Another three inch corner. Yeah, half an inch maybe, but we're talking little, little, not, yeah. So what I'm doing right now is just to start it, I just need to go off the edge. So this is something you can do in your own space. You don't need a table. As you can see, I'm using a 13 by 13 rotary mat under here and just doing a little at a time. I even do bigger quilts this way if needed. A bigger surface is easier, but this works. Because I'm measuring everything to here, that's why I'm able to do it little by little. Now, this is not worth keeping, but both of these are. It's a good size scrap, so I'm gonna measure the narrowest. Uh, two inches and call it two and then I have a two inch scrap in however I'm still holding on to my extra pieces from this project right here I'm actually going to sit it there because I might be able to come up with something so until I'm completely done that's what I do <laughs> spray basting so the reason I'm doing the top and the bottom first is because this is a wider piece and I don't want to I want it to be the biggest usable piece so that's four inches no wonder that doesn't work whoa These actually are good strips for wrapping around like bundles of fabric. So actually I'm going to keep those. And here we are again with this. This one actually has the selvage on it, but usable. It's about two and a half. Pretty good piece.
about keeping the batting, but again, these are good strips for tying around bundles of fabric. And that is a 90 degree, just check it. It's that one. Okay, just make sure we're square. Should should be. Actually, there's no reason to do it that way. Mm. Finished is. Thirty-one and a half. Thirty-two. Wow. Maybe it wasn't holding it. Thirty-two. Okay, we actually were thirty-two. There we go. Thirty-two square. All right. So to make a binding, you add the outside dimensions, which we know is thirty-two, and there's four sides. So we have one hundred and twenty-eight inches, and then we're going to divide it by forty. You get three point two. So. 40 is a conservative number, but there's usually about 42 inches in a width of fabric, uh, piece of fabric. And so we're going to do the, the mitered joints, so we're going to lose a little bit there and have some selvage. So th when it's all done, it tells me 3.2 um, pieces or strips. So I'm just going to round it up and make it four. So between rounding it up and using 40, which is a conservative number, we should have extra. So if for some reason we're really scrimping to get our fabric <laughs> to work, you can be more exact. But that's a good um, rule right there. So I'm gonna cut four strips. This fabric is doubled over, which means I only need four from here. You'll notice all my fabric is stored and I, I store it differently than most people. I fold all my fabric with a fabric um, in half and I fold it double like this. I used to have a really small work area and I, this system just works for me. So even though I have more space now and at the moment I'm standing in a place that doesn't have access to my bigger mat, but it doesn't matter. I'm used to doing this and it works. So anybody can do this. Um, I worked in a very small space. Now, this was not a very good cut over here. I want to make sure I have even, <laughs> see where that is? That's right here on this inch mark. So I'm actually, to my disappointment, having to make a big cut to get a nice clean edge. which just means I have a bigger piece right here to use. <laughs> Not worried about this one. 
But again, these can be used on bundles of fabric. Just put that there and I have a little teeny scrap bin for long skinny pieces just like that. Okay, I'm gonna do my standard two and a half inch binding. I'm gonna cut four. Again, it's doubled, so I'm cutting two at a time. Notice I have my pinky over here. That's to help stabilize it. If you have problems with it moving. There's also little grippy things on the back of these rulers. The, the, um, the paint itself usually provides some grip. Now, Missouri Star does not. This one does, but, you know, um, it... This depends, some are better than others. Anyway, they, they tend to move. So I, I have a video on how I fold and organize my fabric, and that is available in my library of videos. It was filmed, oh God, in late 2021. So, you can go look for that to see more about how I do that. And eventually I might make another video. All right, so I've got this, I have this. Now I'm going to join my seams with a miter and go and attach it. So, let's do that. Now this is the time you want your bob and thread to match what's happening on the top in case when we get to the point where we're folding it over that seam should show up it will blend really well so here we go use your normal 3 8 foot And I said to match it is when we get over here and we roll this over if for some reason I'm being I'm exaggerating with this but for some reason we're not able to get right to that you're not gonna notice it unless you're really close because it blends right in and sometimes it happens but right now I'm being lazy not switching my thread, but I also think I'm going to use this blue as my top stitch. And since I used it on the other blue, it actually makes sense. So going off on the corner like this on an angle, I I really like it since I learned about it. Normally you would stop right here, but tack it off. Um, this right here gives you the ability to follow it with your fabric. See, cause that's right there. And come down, you have a more secure stitch cause it's gonna get locked in the seam over here. And just makes a prettier point in my opinion. So for me, it's been good. But that's why I do it. Coming up on my other end, and unfortunately, I'm going to have two mitered seams kind of close together. The only way I could have prevented that is if I had maybe made my joint farther back, like stopped earlier and moved that. Anyway, okay, so now it's a two and a half inch strip. I need these to overlap two and a half inches. So you wanna make sure everything is nice and straight, taut. Here 
There's one edge. And, oh my goodness. That starts right there? No. Well, that's not right. Oh, okay, the way this tape measure works is it counts from the very, very tip. Okay. <laughs> Getting used to using something I haven't used. Okay, so come down to two and a half. And actually, I prefer to go like two and a quarter, two and a third, don't go quite to the half. And that puts me somewhere around here or in a little bit. And because this has polka dots, I can kind of remember where that was, but you may wanna mark it. So I have almost a full strip left, because remember we needed 3.2 um, strips and here's that point two. We join these like we did to start out with. We have this, this, and you go corner to corner. Before you cut it, make sure it fits. And see, it's just a little, little snug. It works for me. Maybe a tiny bit bigger would have been good, but snug is better and easier to work with than loose. Let me go back a little bit. to flip it over. And I'm gonna leave the blue thread in. We do have a lot of threads from the start and stop on the corners, so as we get there, we'll wanna trim them or contain them. Now, I always start on a corner, but not a top corner because that's where people focus. I don't have my little, little scissors here. Okay, so this is my trick to hiding the start and stop. I actually start right in that center, not off of it, but like right where the, the intersection is and then go around and when I finish I'll show you um, what I do. Okay so here's the top. That blue looks really good and this was talking about where sometimes the under stitching is still visible. We see it because we're looking hard for it. But blending it in is good, and that's why. And then here it is on the back side. So this is what it looks like with the white. And actually, white would have been good. The blue is pretty, especially because I see this here. I'm very happy with the two colors. 
Honestly, usually I will make the top and the bobbin the same on the actual binding itself, but I forgot to change it. <laughs> I like this. Another perk to what I just did is as I'm stitching along here, because I'm stitching on the other side, I can't always see what's going on back here. And this has gone off the back a little bit. Not a big deal, other than sometimes you can see that thread because it might be a different color than what's down here because I'm matching that. Well, it, you don't see it again because we're looking for it because I used white and it blended in. Um, you can't always get away with what I just did, but it's nice when it does, when you do. I really need to go get my little scissors. It is done. It's up on the wall. It is finished. Let's look at this closer. Oh, we're in the dark. Let's look at it closer. Here we are with the blue and the white thread. And what I do at the very end, when I get to the corner where, from where I start, I take it down a little bit and then I tack it off. So there's actually no start and stop that's visible in the corner because we've buried the first one and then run the second one down on top of the first stitching. Anyway, you'll see that if you look at my other tutorials. So this is done and right now I just have it pinned up, but if it were to be a, you know, someone wants it on a wall, I would put some hanging tabs. But this could be for a doll. It could be a table topper. It could be a tablecloth for a little girl's playroom. It could be a newborn. Just kind of fun. Oh, here's a back. Front and back. And this is next Monday's project. <laughs> Possibilities there. <laughs> By saying that's happening? No, you're saying it could be a tabletop or a table runner. I'm just listing what it could be. But you didn't list that it could be a can of corn. If it believes, it could be anything it wants to be. This could be anything it wants to be. If it wants to be a can of corn, it can be a can of corn. That's my husband's contribution to the video. He said, don't limit the possibilities. All right, <laughs> that's it for today. Thank you for being here. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and I'll see you soon.